Get the latest weather, traffic, and news updates online at 560theanswer.com. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios. If you're looking for the latest news, insight into what it means, and the sharpest opinion, there's only one station in Chicago where you can turn, and it's this one. We're AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan, and in frame this morning, John Cass, johncastnews.com. We that, always get a good cup of common sense. Well, that's right. His columns, the Chicago Way podcast. Sign up today. Get a subscription for a friend. And read all about the hyenas at the Tribune. That's yeah. right. We talked about it a little bit earlier in the program. Um, I wanted to fold in some other issues that were not tackled last night, which is most of them, uh, by uh, Dana Bash, who I believe Russia today is prepared to make her the highest paid journalist in the world after that performance. She besmirched her, her position and her name. Some other issues, though, too, uh, just in terms of the Kamala vault. Uh, Kamala was one of the uh, first Pauls to call for Trump's Twitter account to be suspended. (laughs) Then this is still there. This uh, lives in infamy like her Jussie Smollett tweet. Let's be honest. Real Donald Trump's Twitter account should be suspended September 30th of 19 of uh, 2019, I should say. And and, and that's sort of a big issue uh, these days as we see. Uh, one tech CEO arrested in France. We see um, rank and file British citizens being arrested in, uh, in uh, for um, allegedly hateful social media posts that are basically just protesting government policy uh, and the results of said government policy, like the stabbing deaths of children. Um, we uh, see uh, politicians of all sorts in the West promoting the prosecution uh, of Elon Musk civilly, criminally, a combination <laughs> of the two. So, I mean, free speech and a free press are both issues that really are on the ballot this, psych- this uh, election in a way that they haven't been previously. And... Um, uh, so it was interesting, uh, Going big, speaking of vaults, Pavel Durov, who is the CEO of Telegram, arrested by Macron and company in France, who's now out on $5 million bail. Too bad he didn't get arrested in Chicago. No cash bail. Uh, anyway, um, something that he said in an interview he did with Leslie Stahl back in the day about the tension between privacy and security if we were a perhaps a more serious electorate, we would be having a serious discussion of this sort. Is there anything in your mind that says, gee, we have to we have to allow law enforcement to get in because what's going on is, is just unacceptable? You know, the interesting thing about encryption is that it cannot be secure just for, for some people. ISIS and other terrorist groups, they just push a button. On an, on an application like yours, specifically yours, an application, and it's gone around the world like that. Well, again, this is the world of technology, and it's impossible to, to stop them at this point. ISIS could uh, come up with their own messaging solution with, within a month or so if they wanted to, because the... You mean create their own telegram? Exactly. Since Paris, Dorov has been purging ISIS propaganda from Telegram, but says if asked to unlock any private messages, he would tell the authorities that the encryption code makes it mathematically impossible, using a similar argument as Apple. So you're basically saying that even if you wanted to, your hands are tied. Yes. You can't do it. We cannot. So this is one of the great debates of our time. Which is more important? Is, the, is it more important to shut down this kind of terrorism or preserve privacy? I'm personally uh, for the privacy side, but one thing that should be clear is that you cannot make just one exception for law enforcement without endangering uh, private communications of uh, hundreds of millions of people because encryption is either secure or not. Privacy versus security. Can you make an exception, he said? I didn't... You cannot make an exception. Either private communications are private and secured or they're, you know, 
or not. I unless mean, when he's talking about specifically right. the encryption feature. Is, unless your child is going to the Taylor Swift concert. I mean, ask the question in real terms. What would you do if it was your kid and you wanted to protect her? That's what you would ask him. Well, um, and I, I, I know that it's a serious issue and there shouldn't be any exemptions, but still. Yeah. I'm struggling with it, too. Well, um, privacy versus security, particularly in the, um, you have to look at this in a sober way with a kind of, uh, ruling classes we have in the West, political ruling classes. Haven't we already decided this anyway with the expansion of 9-11, with the Patriot Act and so forth? Well, this is the direction the state is forever going, and yeah. the point is that now you have an outlier, one of a few outliers like Telegram, and the encryption feature protects communications from prying state eyes and now Durov is to be held account. And, and interestingly, in that 60 Minutes piece, they talked about trying to remove ISIS propaganda from Telegram. So he was actively taking a role in trying to curate the content. And now he's under in, uh, arrest in France for allegedly being party. Uh, and, well, his culpability is he didn't have to be a material participant in any sort of illegal scheme that was communicated on Telegram. Just the fact of allowing people to communicate about an illegal scheme necessarily implicates the platform provider. Well, that's the end of free speech. That's yes. the end of free thought. Uh, and so, yeah, a question. About, and, and, and by the way, so bringing this back around when Kamala Harris wants Donald Trump removed from Twitter because whatever. I mean, this is, you know, there, there, there's an a, there's an attitude that is being exemplified here. And by the way, speaking of law enforcement, the, you know, our great protectors. Federal law enforcement. As well as our international, I mean, our, our you know, internationally oriented spy agency. Um, as I said, you have to take a sober look at what these institutions actually are, how they operate in the real world today. Michael Schellenberger, independent journalist. Yes. One of the few of those, too. Uh, Schellenberger um, uh, th had uh, posted this riff uh, about the Zuckerberg letter that came out earlier this week, where he finally admitted in a very carefully worded letter what we've all known for years about the FBI's pressuring him, the, 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 essentially um, the deep state pressuring him to... Uh, censor content for the purposes of advancing the Biden electoral interests in 2020. Listen to Schellenberger and think about this again, privacy versus security. These are the agencies that are going to keep us secure in the homeland and America secure in the international arena. Really? Zuckerberg's letter went further than what he told Joe Rogan in 2022 because he specifically mentioned Burisma the Ukrainian natural gas company that Hunter Biden worked for. Zuckerberg wrote, the FBI warned us about a potential Russian disinformation operation about the Biden family and Burisma in the lead up to the 2020 election. Nobody at the FBI has gone to prison or even been properly investigated for their crimes. And yet the evidence shows that the CIA and FBI broke the Wiretap Act and the Hatch Act of 1939, which prohibits the federal employees from using their official authority or influence to interfere with or affect the outcome of an election. First, the FBI violated the Wiretap Act when it misused information it had obtained from spying on Rudy Giuliani. The FBI knew that the New York Post story about the Hunter Biden laptop would be coming out because it was listening to Giuliani's telephone calls. The Wiretap Act, formerly known as Title III of the Omnibus Crime and Control and Safe Streets Act of 1968, requires that information obtained through a wiretap can only be used for purposes directly related to the investigation for which the wiretap was authorized. Misusing or improperly disclosing this information can result in criminal penalties for the individuals involved, and the evidence obtained can be excluded from court proceedings. The FBI both misused and improperly disclosed the information. Second, the FBI spread disinformation, information it knew to be false, in order to interfere in the election. Yes. The FBI warned Facebook, Twitter, and others 
that forthcoming information about Burisma and Biden was Russian disinformation. The FBI knew that the Hunter Biden laptop wasn't Russian disinformation because it already had the laptop in its possession for 10 months and was spying on Giuliani. The FBI knew that the laptop was what it appeared to be, something obtained by a computer repair store owner after Hunter Biden brought it in and never came back for it. So the FBI and the CIA both committed crimes, is what Schellenberger is alleging, and uh, obviously nobody's been in, held accountable or even investigated. This is years after we know that uh, the head of DNI at the time, James Clapon, clap off, clap on, clap off, <laughs> James Clapper, uh, he uh, with the illegal metadata collection that he yeah. lied about before a congressional committee. Congress. So, 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 uh, so I'm supposed to give up my privacy because these agencies and individuals are going to keep me secure, especially when they find out what my politics are. You know, they're the same agencies that are keep that 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 that, that uh, want to track people who attend Catholics who attend the Latin Mass or a, a pro-life uh, activist who protected his sin, uh, his son uh, outside of a a clinic from a uh, an abortion mill from from somebody who was essentially. Uh, 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 you know, acting in a threatening manner towards his minor son. I mean, privacy versus security in the, the West as it's currently constituted, privacy every time for me. For more on uh, this and other matters, Drew Holden joins us. He writes at uh, his Substack, Holden Court. I see what he did there. Uh, DrewHolden.Substack.com is that Substack page. Drew, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate you guys having me on. I know you did this fact checking of the fact checkers um, and the professional prevaricators, which is very good. But I mean, just, you know, you've been you've been you're in this arena. So you, you understand this. Boy, sure. boy, wouldn't it be nice to have and have, frankly, conservatives push a real privacy versus security discussion? Because I think it would redound to the benefit of Republicans if they took a little bit more of a libertarian perspective, given how the federal government operates. Yeah, I think that's right. You know, when I was listening to you guys talk earlier, I was I was thinking to myself, I was like, man, you know, the the people who get to determine under you know under this under a system that leans a little bit more towards uh, the favor of law enforcement here, the people who get to decide what is an offensive type of material are not people who seem to share our interests, right? I spend a lot of time writing about, you know, different issues that the media has called. Russian propaganda or the media has called misinformation or disinformation or conspiracy theories uh, and the way that those those alleged conspiracy theories uh, are end up proven true with enough time and enough evidence and enough digging right you look at something like the idea that COVID leaked from a lab in Wuhan was a conspiracy theory there are people who were kicked off social media platforms Twitter X Facebook um, for just suggesting these sorts of things, right? And so I think I think I, d despite a, a not particularly libertarian disposition, otherwise, I hear these sorts of things, and I think, man, the ISIS propaganda stuff is that's an easy one, right? Like I, I get why they talk about that one so much because it's like, okay, that's pretty cut and dry. But what happens the next time that there's something that the media tells us is a conspiracy theory that isn't, and we ought to talk about it? Uh, is is that going to get me investigated? Could that like could a President Kamala Harris? decide that that's a you know some sort of violation of my internet right uh maybe you know and maybe these sorts of things uh it, given the latitude to progress in that direction i think could have really dangerous consequences for conservatives well right i mean that's 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 the thing is um this is a, a, a civics uh, lesson here once you destroy institutions and destroy people's confidence in them well well, don't expect uh, them to defer to those institutions that you've destroyed. And that this is where yeah. we're at. Right. I mean, you know, yes, yeah, exactly. you, it's a question of trust. Yeah. Right. Fundamentally, it's a question of trust. Uh, and yeah, Brett, you know, you, you mentioned the Hunter Biden laptop story. Right. Um, that's a really good reason not to trust the media the way that they covered the Hunter Biden laptop story. But leveling up from that, it's a really, really good reason not to trust organizations like the FBI and the CIA. Right. Like these should be explosive, unbelievable claims about the role that they played to cover up. And, and don't forget, this was right before the election and, and, and the role that they played to, to tip the scales for the man who ended up winning the presidency should frighten any free thinking person, any right thinking person. Uh, and the fact that it doesn't, I, I think I find jarring. And it, 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 unfortunately, I think that's, that's kind of the self-replicating cycle here is, eh, that's, eh whatever, they were, they were listening to Rudy Giuliani. What's the big deal? Like, this is the big deal. 
the, the consequences of it are the big deal. The business of I have nothing to hide, look at my phone, go ahead, CIA, <laughs> FBI. Why haven't the Republicans made this an issue that you and Dan have argued for? Why haven't they made it an issue that way? That's, that's a good question. I mean, my, my knee-jerk reaction, and I guess yeah. probably my fear more than anything, is that you know, for too long, I think the Republican Party has been really wedded to corporate interests. And there are a lot of, you know, there are a lot of mixed up corporate interests here mm-hmm. um, that, you know, obviously not not the tech companies, because they have the interest in, on the, the side of, uh, of, of personal safety and security and, uh, you know, the, the lack of access to that information. Uh, but but I worry that in some ways it's just too hot a stove to touch sometimes. Um, and that there's a lot of forces, be they corporate, be they media, that are just arrayed against the idea that we we should be secure in our communication. Well, and there's yeah, also I'm curious to hear what you yeah yeah there's also there's also the 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 default position of 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 being supportive of law enforcement of the FBI yeah. of our spy spy uh, you know our spy agency the CIA the um, and 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 the thing and, and this is what you get too. You know, you know, you know it's Comey or it's it's Ray, but it's the leadership at the rank and file. Well, you know, that's that may all be well and good, but uh, you know, the leadership is is the ball game. And if yeah. the it, you know if it's corrupted, then the institution is corrupted. And so, it, and it seems to me this is such an opportunity. Just going back to that Kamala tweet, you pulled Donald Trump off Twitter. Well, she she is a dilettante. She's an exactly the sort of person uh yeah. that you will backdoor or her at, at minimum backdoor her way into fascistic crackdowns on constitutional rights because it's popular because the the online mob is whipped up to do it because the yeah. spy agencies give you a co- or the law enforcement give you a cover story about our national security or domestic tranquility i mean she's exactly yeah. the sort of cipher that would do something um you know this severe yeah and i and i think you're you make a good point about um the ability of conservatives to to grab this point and run with it um because i i I think that's exactly right like uh, the people who are our opponents in this case are absolutely the type of 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 kind of you know uh, that i don't want to be crass but useful idiots who can absolutely advance the the interests of the spy agencies or whomever um, and I think we've, we've seen that since 2016, right? All of Russiagate, the entire Russian collusion narrative was one that was born in so many ways and created and constructed uh, and, and, you know, fabricated by the intelligence agencies. They, they were feeding this, this, this what, what is rightly understood as disinformation into the ecosystem that would benefit democratic the, the electoral politics. Uh, and I think there's no reason we should expect that to stop anytime soon. Drew Holden writes at his Substack, Holden Court. That's Drew Holden, H O L D E N, drewholden.substack.com. Drew, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. The pleasure's mine. Thank you, guys. Thank you, sir. And he joins us on the turnkey.pro answer line. There's only one radio show in Chicago talking about today's biggest stories and telling you what they really mean. That show is this one Chicago's Morning Answer on AM 560, The Answer. In 2012, the Journal of Cognition and Emotion published a study that showed that we make a decision to trust a person within 100 milliseconds of seeing their face. Making a good first impression has never been more important, and you can make that positive impression with a professional headshot from Tom Killoran Photography. Whether you're a job seeker trying to land your next